Hi, my name is Jennifer and I won the Technovation competition in 2016. So a really interesting field uh, in computer science that's emerged over the past 50, 60 years or so is AI or artificial intelligence, which is the idea that computers themselves can have some sort of form of intelligence that will allow them to solve important problems. And so this development is very exciting because it allows computers to take on roles that previously we only thought that humans could possibly do. So today we're going to be speaking with some leading researchers in the field of AI to hear about how they're applying AI to their work and what sorts um, of, of achievements and research they're conducting to make AI even more intelligent. Hi, I'm Dan Jarafsky. I'm a professor at Stanford University of Linguistics and Computer Science, and I want to talk about natural language processing. So natural language processing, that's any time we use computer science techniques to analyze language. You talk to your phone, you translate languages. Every time you're doing a search on Google, you're using natural language processing. And what I want to do today is talk about how natural language processing can be used not just to build a widget, but to actually understand something about ourselves. And I want to start with um, a, a very everyday kind of language that we're going to use natural language processing to understand. And that's the language of food. We're going to look at some cheap potato chips, some expensive potato chips, and we've done this experiment in the lab. You could do this at home. And just looked at how the words differ on expensive chips versus cheap chips. So one difference is what's been called technically distinction. So the more expensive a chip, the more it tries to distinguish itself from other chips. For example, words like more or less, words that compare things, words like best or finest, or even just words for negation, words like no or not or never. And so sure enough, if you, if you just count the distinction words on the cheap chips and on expensive potato chips, you find five times more of these um, distinction words on expensive chips. So let's read the back of one of the most expensive potato chip brands. Never fried, never baked. We don't fry it, we don't bake it. Nothing fake or phony. No fake colors, no fake flavors. No fluorescent orange fingertips. No wiping your greasy chip hand on your jeans, no really. Lots of no's there and you're paying four cents extra for every one of those no's. So that's a simple analysis, but we can do things that are much more complicated with artificial intelligence because we can look at big data sets. On an inexpensive menu, the cheapest menus, you get real whipped cream, real mashed potatoes, and real bacon bits. On a slightly more expensive restaurant, you might get real crab or real maple syrup, but the most expensive restaurants just don't use the word real because everything is real, or at least that's what you're supposed to think. So if cheap restaurants are talking about adjectives and real things and the expensive restaurants aren't doing that, what are they doing? Well, they're, they're using fancy words. So, so they're using rare words, words like tonarelli or bastia or persiad, fancy foreign words that you might have to ask the waiter what they mean. Or they just use longer versions of common words. So you might see words like decaffeinated or accompaniments instead of decaf or sides. Um, and in fact, you can measure these rare words, because rare words tend to be longer, you can just ask how much does the length of a word associate with the price of the dish, and it turns out every time you add an extra letter to the average length of a word in the dish, you're paying 18 cents more for that dish. All right, so we've looked at potato chips, and we've looked at menus. I want to look at one final kind of data set, and that's reviews. The web is full of restaurant reviews, and I'm showing you here a, uh, a negative restaurant review. So this is a one-star review. Somebody really hated this restaurant. You'll notice it's got words like absolutely horrible, and we waited 10 minutes, and we will not return. When we first began to look at these, we thought, oh, these one-star restaurant reviews, they're going to be about greasy food. But there's no mention of the food at all. What's going on? So we looked at all the one-star reviews and looked at the characteristics of their language negative words, words like horrible or awful or bad, stories in the past tense, so use words like waited or didn't, not wait or do. A bad thing happened, we use the past tense instinctively to put this bad thing in the past, you know, this, this thing is over. And we use the words we and us to say we're going to get through this bad thing together. And what that tells you is 
the, these one-star restaurant reviews, they're not about the food. They tell you the psychological state of the diner. So in summary, natural language processing is, this, is, is a very practical thing. We use it every day in all sorts of tools, but it's also a great window into human psychology, into human attitudes, and really it's a window into ourselves.